here partly because we love the f fertility of Dean's imagination. I was trying to pick something to read, and I thought, what I really want to do is read the first line of all of these poems. They're so <laughs> wonderful. The, but the poem I'm going to read of his is called Dog Toy. And I uh, want to read it because um, the story at the beginning of the poem uh, is a story I told Dean about my nephew, uh, who invented a, a dog toy that was very popular. And, and I want to read it partly because the, the, this spring, when I was worried about whether Dean was going to survive long enough to get a transplant, this nephew, who was 36 years old, was running a marathon in San Francisco, crossed the finish line, and uh, lay down and died of a heart attack. And immediately, not long afterwards, we got the news that Dean was going to get a heart. So I was looking this way, worried about Dean, and I thought, it was weirdly like a Dean Young poem. Master, how can I make a million dollars? Cherry blossoms shake in the rain. If you try decorative switch covers, yes, but the process is too expensive with much breakage. Moon dabbed bush clover. Have you tried a dog toy made from two tennis balls united by a short length of repelling rope? So the novice goes off and does this very cheaply and sells 35000 in a week at 200% above cost. Then Purita Dog Chow offers to buy him out for a mill. But still, as evening collapses upon the orange aid drinkers carousing the boutiques, he puts his hand down his throat to touch his own heart, and it stings. A million isn't that much. So he goes back up to the hut on the mountain and asks, is it the lion in the cave or the lion coming out roaring? Neither in nor out. What is that? suggests the master. But isn't there something more, pleads the novice. Have you tried love, taunts the master. So the novice goes back to Berkeley and eats crab with an undergraduate who makes him feel in danger, but also volcanic. The crab cracks like fire. Her breasts shine like the sea glimpsed through a broken wall. But he's afraid she won't leave, and at the same time, afraid she won't stay. And she keeps saying she wants to be an aromatherapist, so the novice decides he must quit this world and give everything he owns to a group protecting the coyote. <laughs> there are two kinds of people, and the right ones think it's okay if a coyote eats the occasional chihuahua. <laughs> so the novice returns and says, I have done everything you said. What things, explains the master. There is no doing, no not doing, no two kind of people. There is only the fluid that drips from the dragon's mouth. But what about the effect of glucosamine on synovial joints? <laughs> people actually say they feel better. What about Beethoven's deafness, cunnilingus? What is the best way to cook fish? Cover with wax paper and marinate for two hours and saute rapidly in hot olive oil. Do you have any spare change, proposes the master? But what about walking in the rain and being miserable? What about being happy with nothing? How the clouds that are nothing completely consume the mountain. And they go on like this for years, learning nothing, sleeping late, getting drunk until the master dies like snow melting from a fence. So the novice writes a book called Dog Toy that becomes a bestseller. <laughs> then he goes on a talk show with someone who fell from an airplane and survived, and someone else who had been struck by lightning many times and survived, and a woman who had exhausted all forms of conventional treatment, but when all hope seemed gone, she just started concentrating and drinking a lot of water until she was completely healed and able to move paper clips without even touching them. What are you waiting for? You've already been given a free gift. <laughs> That's Dean in 1999, and I'm going to read a poem of mine because when I showed it to Dean, he read it and he kind of perked up and said, I think I'm starting to influence you. Uh, it's, it's a poem about uh, falling in love in the summertime. A swarm of dawns, a flock of restless moons. There's a lot to be written in the book of errors. The elderly redactor is blind for all practical purposes. He has no imagination and field 
Mice have gnawed away his source text for their nesting. Let me do those consonants again. He has no imagination and field mice have gnawed away his source text for their nesting. I loved you first, I think, when you stood in the kitchen sunlight in the lazy motes of summer dust while I sliced a nectarine for Moroccan salad and the seven league boots of your private grief. Maybe the syntax is a little haywire there. Left to itself, wire must act like Paul Clay with a pencil. <laughs> Hay is the old English word for strike. You strike down grass, I guess, when it is mown. Mown. The field mice devastated the monastery garden, maybe because it was summer and the dusks were full of marsh hawks and the nights were soft with owls. They couldn't leave the herbs alone, gnawing the roots of rosemary, nibbling its sage and oregano and lemon thyme. It's too bad eglantine isn't an herb because it's a word I'd like to use here. <laughs> That's the Dean line. <laughs> Her coloring was a hybrid of rubbed amber and the little flare of dawn rose in the kernel of an almond. It's a wonder to me that I have fingertips. The knife was very sharp, the scented rose orange moons, quarter moons of fruit fell to the cutting board. So neatly it was as if two people lived in separate cities and walked to their respective bakeries in the rain. Her bakery smelled better than his. The sour cloud of yeast from sourdough hung in the air like the odor of creation. They both bought slice loaves, they both walked home, they both tripped in the entry to their separate kitchens and the spilled slices made the exact same pattern on the two floors. The nectarines smelled like the book of luck. There was a little fog off the bay at sundown in which the waning moon swam laps. The Miwoks called it moon of the only credit card. <laughs> I would have given my finger to touch your cheekbone and I did. That night, the old monk knocked off early. He was making it all up anyway, and he had a lot of raisin wine at Vespers. Thank you. <laughs>